I agree. It's going to be very, very difficult for me, Amon. But um, going ahead here with the NR list and Psycho Kid, as you suspected, then responds here with the Skellige control list. And I can immediately see some good things happening here for Psycho Kid. Has found the Aneromancy, Sova, as well as the, the cards that really benefit off of your leader passive, like the raiding. Um, uh, the Terror of the Seas ship and, of course, the Demon Light Longship and the Bjorn in round one already. That is really good when you want to maximize that passive. Miamon, on the other hand, has found both Eastred and uh, Snowdrop, which I think is a very good start to this. Um, so let's see how Psycho Kid deals with the engine threats that will start coming down from Miamon's side of the board now. Mm, and of course, taking out the Rams and Blue Queen makes absolute sense here because that stratagem is definitely going to come in handy playing the list that we are playing. You want to pull those cards out and you want to put them back in your deck as many times as you possibly can. Build up the carryover for later rounds. So far, it's looking good. What are we going to be drawing? Let's see here. Um, oh yeah, one thing to note here with the Siege engine, Miamon is really wanting to have both of those uh, Siege Masters in hand because I think there is only one Siege engine in this list and it is the Siege Tower. So Miamon is going to be real happy to be able to play that out with uh, both Siege Masters in hand as well. So it seems like that is something that has been found so far. Yeah, seems to be a very intelligent choice there. Psycho Kid going directly into Tempest here with a Neuromancy, thinning both of the fogs out. Makes sense. It ensures that you have a better chance at drawing your cards later on. And it also starts pinging off that pesky Istrid. That's absolutely right. More decision making happening and hopefully some Melitula action as well as Melitula is ideally going to be shuffled back and forth along with something like Priestess. Uh, Mimon is taking the time to decide here. What is going to be happening next? Hmm. Alright, Istrid as well as Snowdrop getting that engine value. They are going to be quite dangerous if they stay on the board forever. Psycho Kid might want to start pinging them away. Uh, he definitely wants to play that longship. Yeah. The longship can steadily start damaging cards, giving armor to his pirates and ships in hand. Yeah, so far Psycho Kid is being pretty conservative with the removal here. Uh, thinning coming down now from Miamon, getting those Siege Masters out is very lovely. Um, and here comes the Redanian Secret Service as well, ready to purify something if need be. In this matchup, probably not that necessary. We're racing a lot of tempo coming here from Mayamon on blue coin. Psycho Kid is going to have to get rid of these engines or maybe just opt out. It's something like seven cards. He also has that squirrel in hand and Mayamon knows that it is potentially there. So if you're going to be playing something like Amphibious Assault, now might also be one of your best chances to do so, hoping that Psycho Kid hasn't drawn into it just yet. That's right. Um, let's see if we can get any of those leader charges, any um, raid cards coming out, Squirrel, so far. Uh, just banishing the Radiant Secret Service. Does not seem like Psycho Kid is interested in committing any of the removal just yet, rather saving it for later. Um, and it looks like he's kind of giving me a on this round, not contesting it. Yeah, isn't really committing anything. Mayamon doesn't seem to be wanting to opt out here and give him the round either. Both players not really having to commit much here. Psycho Kid has two more bronzes left in hand before he goes into the committal phase. I can't imagine he'd want to do that. Um, yeah, at some point Mayamon could do a bit of a hero pass, so we don't want to see that happen either. 
That is right. Psycho Kid definitely thinking if it's worth continuing to trade something here or just uh, giving Miamon sort of the round. There is a slight awkward situation um, with the Witcher mentor there. Um, just because it gets, it's way more powerful when it uh, goes down to adrenaline and currently Miamon does not have that many different plays to be able to go for. So uh, he has to play the Witcher without any adrenaline. I think is ready to play those teleportations on it then trigger it multiple times. Um, Radovid would would have been a nice find, but of course then it would be pretty easy for Psycho Kid to just pass on it and uh, leaving Miamon to not be able to trigger that order ability. And the pass makes sense here, just doesn't say that it's worth playing any more cards and rather saves the removal for this later stage. Now, uh, the control is in Miamon's hands either playing into this round or saying uh, I'm gonna go to round three but I believe that round three is sort of um, maybe consists of playing priestess maybe you want to play a long round to get all of that military value um, from reshuffling her multiple times we'll see how it goes yeah, the thing is, Northern Realms uh, definitely wants to build up their points, whereas Skalaga has a pretty strong punch in a short round, just with the cards you see already. I mean, Sov is a lot of points. You're also going to see that Skalaga wants to interact with their opponent's side of the board. Almost all their cards are control cards. So you kind of want to abuse that if you can. Psycho Kid can't really play very practically. He has to interact with the cards. And now might be his best chance to actually do so. I suspect we'll, we'll see some cards being played here to potentially get rid of Radovit. Question is how many of them can. Almost all of them with a well-placed leader charge is capable of eliminating this threat. Yep. That could be something that Psycho Kid wants to consider. Um, Sova can be pretty hard to trigger when playing against Northern Realms because of all the boosts that eventually will end up on the cards. Um, so perhaps Psycho Kid wants to consider keeping a short round uh, power play with Sova into little Hothruhe uh, and then using double leader charge on that for a pretty decent finisher. So uh, could be that Psycho Kid is kind of assessing the situation before spending some leader charges uh priestess coming into the deck here uh which eventually or into the hand which eventually will then go back to the deck of course yeah the priestess already has three charges there as we can see definitely very handy in a short round i normally like to see her being paired with something like tritum infantry but i don't think in this deck we'll get to see it of course, it is difficult to keep both of them alive and get maximum value out of it. And we can see the commitment is pretty strong here. Mayamon is on seven cards. If he decides to push further, he is going to be a card down in round three. If he can't keep up the pace, we do see him committing into round two, potentially going for some soft bleeding value. Amphibious Assault is safe and Squirrel's already being used there on Psycho Kid's end. Melitola as well, starting to get reshuffled here. Double teleportation is now open, perhaps on this Griffin Witcher Mentor, which is why Psycho Kid is probably looking to get rid of that. Here comes one of those leader charges and um, potentially going to muzzle this or just um, raiding it here yeah, is an option as well. But uh, kind of having to get rid of it some way. It seems like Bjorn is going to be the choice of removal. Uh, this means that teleportation uh, is not available on it. Uh, currently, necromancy, of course, is something that we see here in Miyama's hand that could bring it back. Yeah, Psycho Kid uh, still easily able to get ahead if he wants to do so. He is playing it a little bit slow. He has one more bronze left uh, before he goes into a little bit of commitment value. A Neuromancy, of course, giving him the option to draw something if need be. Mayamon goes for Melitale a second time. We're going to see that charge go off. Very nicely done. Gets a Revenant there on the range row. Could come in handy if it survives, but I doubt it will. Yeah, perhaps the mentor is the priority target to remove off of the board. 
uh, for now, just because the teleportations and um, reinforcements is looking a little bit scary. Uh, so the Revenant does indeed survive for a little bit, but um, can it get the death <laughs> blow value? Not yet, it seems. No, if Psycho Kid did click on the ship, it would have been a problem, but Psycho Kid luckily didn't fall for the obvious bait, the Revenant. Uh, yeah, I wonder if we'll see a, a Revenant click just for fun. We do see a second one coming on <laughs> the melee row. Now the ship is in mortal danger, so Psycho Kid needs to uh, analyze this threat accordingly. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, seeing the reinforcements come down on the Revenant here. Uh, teleportation, on the other hand, not looking that great as of now. Um, a totem coming down from Psycho Kid, perhaps thinking that it would be a good round to swallow blood again kind of giving Miamon the option to pass here by not quite getting ahead um but Miamon says yeah i need to keep playing and go into this round even further there is more to do um and yeah that pull right there allows for another witcher mentor so the teleportations now that previously didn't look so good, now does look a lot better. Unless, of course, Psycho Kid uses removal or perhaps even muscle on this Viper Witcher Mentor. But nice value here. Also, reaching Adrenaline gets a bit of a boost from that. Yeah, I love this. Mayamon going for an excellent soft bleed here. At any point, he can decide to commit if he really wants to do so. He still has three leader charges, all of them pretty handy. That verification too does have a target now after the order ability on Kair Saren is used. Psycho Kid has to go into his commitment phase here. Are we going to see verification on Mayamon's own card or perhaps on Psycho Kid's card? It Depends where the small blood is clicked and what the goal here is. I think the small blood alone can trigger these little um, the the creatures spawned from the totem. Um, so putting giving ten points with the verification is perhaps not ideal. But look at this wow. white that just came down. Um, yeah. There is no more board and pretty fun way for Psycho Kid to clear off the Mentor as well. Uh, Miamon, on the other hand, does keep playing. Wow, that's that's crazy. That is what you want to see. It's uh, It just makes all the dopamine receptors in my brain go off at the same time. Well, yeah, very very much that. <laughs> this is definitely a bleed at this point. Uh, Miamon can keep on playing cards that aren't worth a lot. Psycho Kid has to commit now he doesn't have any cards left that aren't commitment in my opinion and to be honest you don't really want to play any of those just yet well i suspect we'll s well can mayamon get ahead here i doubt we'll ever see a hero pass coming from psycho kid but yeah mayamon can <laughs> technically get ahead that verification is going to play for quite a few points he still has those lead yeah. charges as well so he is threatening it he's certainly threatening the ability to get ahead if need be there is the verification plus an additional card to be pulled from hand. So it seems like Miyamon does <laughs> say here, I'm just going to give you this um, teleportation. And I'm wondering <laughs> what Psycho Gate is going to do about this one. That's pretty funny. I like that. That is, a <laughs> that is an interesting move. It's telling Psycho Kid, hey. You wanna risk it? You wanna you wanna pass? See what see what happens, I dare you. <laughs> there are still leader charges indeed in Miamon's hand. So that gives uh, about six points on the board. Then Traveling Priestess has quite a few charges accumulated by now, I believe. So um definitely putting Psycho Kid in a position where there might be a good good card coming down. I'm wondering if it's the heat wave on the the artifact just because yeah the verification would have been um so many points on that mm -hmm. yeah well i assume this is a pass from mayamon definitely a pass <laughs> well now you have a few options here that terror of the seas already has 12 armor and it's going to be able to take out a pretty big card your goal really is to play around that and hope that it gets 
committed uh it's it's gonna be tricky it's probably one of the biggest threats right now but so of itself is gonna play for a lot of points too if pulled off correctly interesting yeah Soba needs to be triggered with some kind of chip damage um, or direct damage plus the leader charge. I believe the squirrel is the only target for Soba currently. Um, Tesha Mutna's sword as well, not a bad pull here for Psycho Kid uh, to get. And Miamon, of course, does not have last say anymore. Going to be pretty intense. Hmm. At least Fallblood is out of the way, so if Mayamon decides to spawn a few cards there with his leader ability, it's not going to hurt as much as it would have hurt a little bit earlier. Now, that verification definitely still needs to find a worthy target, as there isn't currently one in hand. Could be put back as well with the leader charges mm -hmm. and not be a card that is actually going to be played since the funny heat wave play from last round. Um, <laughs> that was uh, interesting. Okay, and here comes a proactive play from Psycho Kid leaving the Hafru on the board um, because there is no way for that to be purified by Miamon anymore, so it's safe to leave there and, you know, do damage as the the round progresses. I quite like that play. The thing with Skelligas, not a single card in hand is proactive. Uh, you can't really play them on the board. I mean, Terror of the Seas is something you can sort of uh, float around, but that creates a target on your opponent's side of the board, and I actually do quite like it. Now Psycho Kid can take that out with any one of the cards in his hand currently. Oh, wow. All right, that is a discard. Um, Miamon taking advantage here of the zero to no proactivity in Psycho Kid's hand. Of mm. a, I guess Psycho Kid is going to spend some removal now on this Hopfruem. But that other than that, not much else to do. Yeah, so we do see Psycho Kid's play being quite helpful. Because if there wasn't a target on board, he would have been in uh, quite a bit of trouble. He still gets some more armor on that Terror of the Seas as well. Mayamon simply throwing away that card indicates that he might be willing to do it again. Yeah, a lot of reactiveness from Psycho Kid that potentially would not have a target, but I mean, the Hofroya needs to be damaged down at some point. Um, so there is still a target for damage on Miamon's side of the board. I'm wondering how this is going to be timed. Of course, um, Alzer's double cross gives uh, Miamon a little lift from the deck, uh, while the leader charge can still shuffle back something like Priestess um, and Amphibious Assault then again being able to fetch that. But what is the ordering happening here? Do it, Miamon. Oh, okay, he, he finally played a card. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright. Did not decide to discard that. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not gonna help as much. I mean, the cards that Psycho Kid is is playing with are capable of a lot of damage, and uh, two points really isn't that big a deal. He does decide to go for Fukushia, and um, I mean the little Hafra, and it does actually give so a lot of points. It's twenty four already. The point gap is looking very big. But don't count your points before they have hatched. Mayamon is still sitting on a bunch of points. He just hasn't drawn into it yet. Purposely so. But we do see that Traveling Priestess. And it's finally being played. Yeah, keeping those tokens on the board is very nice. Being able to split the damage as evenly as possible here. Uh, but of course, there is the Tesha Mutna Sword. We're going to be doing 10 points of damage currently coming down on the priestess and really maximizing the points on this boat with 14 armor since it's been sitting there ever since round one accumulating all of that armor that can be transformed into points which is very scary for me i'm on not having that last say going down a card in round two final play coming down here maximizing the points with Melitola, and that will be all the points from me on side of the board the question is is psycho kids leader charge and the ship going to be enough to take this Melitola down. 
Well, I'm pretty excited to see. He just needs to do this quickly because he is gonna start roping anytime soon. Melitale has been drawn quite a few times now, absolutely playing her value. And will we see it being played on the board? Of course. 47 points, Seely. This is a lot. Wow. 15 points of damage does not quite do it here. Okay. And Miyamon does take the lead by one single point, which is insane. <laughs> Whoa, chat. Look at that. I could go over to the other screen, but I don't want to. I want to just have everybody take this <laughs> in for a second. Yeah, it's good that we got to look at that for a while. <laughs> wow. What a game. That was wow. very interesting. I was wondering. Mayamon discarded a card as well. It didn't matter. Psycho Kid struggled to get points. That's the thing with control heavy decks. You know, you need an actual target to control or else you're just going to be floating a bunch of potential points. Wow, Seely, that was that was intense. I agree, Tia. It was um, not a very fast game, but it definitely you know accumulated in beautiful finale they're very intense and it seemed very well calculated by miyamon by leaving that special card in hand playing it out having the tokens to kind of distribute the damage evenly so that even with some tall removal available it did not completely destroy uh miyamon in the end that was pretty crazy <laughs> Yeah, there's a very interesting sort of social system taking place here, almost like natural selection. You have your control decks and you have your decks that can be controlled. Right now we're going to see a lot of control decks who survived the first few series. And then you're going to see decks like Mayamons that somehow can survive the control deck and maybe even exploit it. Because, I mean, these players are putting all their eggs in one basket when they're putting things like Heat Wave, Muzzle, um, Curse of Corruption, and Single Decks. So, uh, yeah, if those cards don't find value, that's a lot of provisions that are lost. And Mayamon is seemingly exploiting this. So, now Psycho Kid is going on Blue Coin. He has the option of taking his monster list through. Are we potentially seeing that one, or is it too obvious a deck to play right now? I wonder. I think it could be potential that we do see it. Um, I was just going to say about the, the previous game, it's still on my mind. Um, yeah, with the lineups that you mentioned, the kind of uh, greediness versus control. Okay, I guess we are moving into the next game, actually, but never mind. We can sum it up after the series. I'd love but to hear your thoughts. thoughts here. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Um, we do see the Arrakis, which mm. you're correct about. So we do have Psycho Kid now on blue coin, of course. Mimon on red. Now, Mimon, potentially strategy-wise here, is hoping to outgreed the AQ because it is combo deck and very, very difficult for Mimon to stop. Um, overall, there is not much, uh, many ways of getting through a potential defender potential uh, AQ and multiple copies of the Eater. So uh, perhaps Miyamon is just queuing the Skellige here saying that, hey, I know uh, I don't have a lot of control to control your deck, but I also know that you don't have a lot of control to control my deck. Uh, of course, Sigvold Knut's combo being the combo uh, that Miyamon is focusing on. So it would be combo deck versus combo deck here. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see. Yeah, and we see Eder being placed on the board right off the bat i don't have access to the deck list here but does my mom have anything that can get rid of it like a potential heat wave uh miamon does not have anything like that i believe let me just double check for you uh no does not focus on any kind of removal wow just saying okay. um here's my old beard have at it and potentially i guess bring it back with interesting Sabbath. so very interesting, because Psycho Kid doesn't have to worry at all about protecting this Idder if that's the case. You can just slam it down and immediately go for cards like your Arachas Queen, potentially pull it out now with that Tome, get a Neuromancy into the mix. Are we going to see that Queen coming out? Yep, there she is. Uh, going to be eating this Eater, of course, aiming to create more Eaters. And Miyamon, on the other hand, 
uh, will probably try to play into this round with considering the old geared is on board. Uh, something like Knut could be resurrected again. There is a CGFS right, so if um, Yamon wants to, could be using that Knut on the old geared, for example, here. Mm. Ogird, of course, a very tempting target to get rid of with the heat wave, but potentially not the one you're going for. Because Mayamon has a lot of cards that are going to abuse cards like Ogird, especially with cards like Knut. Uh, it's a pretty dangerous one, I'd say. But uh, yeah, Psycho Kid doesn't have to worry too much. He could also just remove the engines that exploit Ogird at this point, um, as his cards are going totally uncontested and that's gonna be pretty dangerous for Mayamon if he isn't careful. Taking the verification target here on Psycho Kid's tome, of course, Mayamon has a tome of its of his own there um, in the hand. So can tutor out an Aeromancy to potentially get another big card out if necessary. Uh, we discussed Svalblood, for example, yesterday against uh, an AQ Swarm matchup. The Svalblood and the timing of it will be really crucial for Miamon to time right. Because there is one and that can take care of a lot of those one point tokens when uh, necessary. So having access to that an Aeromancy at all times will be very useful for Miamon. And there is yet the Melusine to be set up as well. So that could be something that Mimon could plan on still going for if Mimon wants to continue pushing into this round. Yeah, absolutely. The thing here is that if people aren't going to take out your win conditions like the Idders, the Cave Trolls and the Arachas Queens, you don't really have to worry about making use of something like a Glusty Finisher. You can just consume all the drones and try to deny that swell blood value at all costs. Already Mayamon is sort of tempting, baiting a potential reset there. Um, he's putting a lot of points on one card. And also playing around cards like Idder, of course, because Idder isn't going to damage your card or gain charges if you don't play any units. Yep, also uh, the less cards on your side of the board before you drop the small blood down, the better. So perhaps... Uh, there's still room for a swell blood if you really really want to win the round one this kiki stalker on cypher kid's side of the board though is going quite strong here gathering up charges for whenever necessary mm. right now psycho kid isn't worrying too much about consuming any more cards just playing some more drones gaining some more charges taking it slow and we finally see knut coming out here that's going to be uh, killed very quickly, if I am not mistaken. Yep, that Knut taking a point uh, of damage when coming on the board. Not too bad just yet. A Parasite was an interesting choice for Psycho Kid's list here. Um, could be taking care of that Knut, as you said. Um, which is, yeah, not, not many ways for Miamon to resurrect the cards that do end up going into the graveyard here uh so that could be decent to use here in round one if psycho kid tries to secure it further interesting choice not to get rid of knut um yeah very interesting i guess setting up your ran warrior engine feels like something you want to do instead um yeah, pretty interesting. I guess keeping Parasite for now is something he's considering. Like you said, he didn't bring Acid Spit into the mix, so Parasite is a control card he specifically kept here for something else. Um, yeah. Th yeah. Uh, Knut's Berserk also needs... Um... To go down to five to be able to to refresh the order ability so perhaps psycho kid said it's not a threat just yet mm -hmm. uh, and wants to remove it later but we do see miamon playing the totem which could further be indicating that a small blood is sort of ready to come down in round one that is definitely potentially true. It's also a pity that psycho kid doesn't have access to anything that can consume that Araha screen right now as that would have given him another idder, but it is what it is. The verification was used on the tome, and Mayamon's not giving him a tome back either to draw into something like Royal Decree, so Psycho Kid decides to pass here on the five cards he has left. 
Yep, me and Mon very easily being able to take the round here, and uh, round control is definitely not a bad thing to have. I think uh, me and Mon is potentially looking to go deep into the next round, unless me and Mon says, I'm fine with my Spall Blood in a long round, I can deny the Glusty uh, and develop my Sigvald Knut enough and, and don't need to push any further. I like the tone play right now, getting it out but denying Psycho Kid the ability to use it himself. He does put a Neuromancy into the mix as well, and we're gonna see a squirrel there getting rid of either a Nero or one of the Idders. Yep. Getting rid of the Eater from the graveyard seems like a good call here. One less Eater to worry about from which in, which is Sabbath. Yeah, we can see that Onira is not coming back, so he did get rid of the Onira instead. Which is Sabbath still has access to two Eders, and I don't think you can really complain. Perhaps even that Araha Queen, I believe, and now that you have an Andrega Warrior in hand. Oh, not in hand, but it had the potential to consume it. All right, here is the defender. Not too much to defend, to be fair, because Miyamon will not be interacting too much uh, with the opponent side of the board at all. Melusine, nice find here. Let's see what Psycho Kid chooses to use that heat wave on in this matchup. I'm expecting it would be something like Sigvold. Uh, very, very important to get rid of, and nothing other than heat wave does do the job fully. So this Melusine probably gets to tick uh, for some time. Meanwhile, Psycho Kid is setting up the Hive Mind to get some of these little um, insects on the board. Yeah, Hive Mind is a pretty nice card to have. And uh, yeah, it certainly helps setting up your Stalkers as well, but you do want to make sure that they don't die too quickly. So playing one of the other cards first is nice. This one in particular will get a charge every time you play an organic card. Yeah, no squirrel threat anymore either to remove that hive mind from the graveyard, uh, which is nice for Psycho Kid and pretty safe to play now. All right, Psycho Kid, you now have the option of doing quite a bit of damage here with your setup. Isn't touching the Witch's Sabbath just yet. All right, there goes the Melusine into the graveyard. Kikimura Stalker really showing its worth. Uh, impressive thing to have on the board. Pretty scary for Miyamon, and even scarier is the fact that Miyamon really cannot deal with these uh, things and probably is just aiming to push some of the valuable cards out as soon as possible. Uh, that Witch's Sabbath is going to be very threatening. Perhaps Miyamon wants to see it here in round two. Going for the Swallblood now getting decent value with not many cards on Yemon's side of the board yet and clearing out some of those drones for now but there is the heat wave and uh that kind of frees the sigvold up for Mion. i do like that heat wave play that card would have been pretty deadly in a uh, deck that specifically wants to swarm as much as possible Mayamon isn't stopping anytime soon and finally gets out Ceres as well. That's going to help a lot with uh, pulling off some of those damage combinations. Of course, a lot of the power that this deck has in Araha's Swarm is the ability to uh, swarm and abuse the fact that your engines rely heavily on it. So if Mayamon continues to persist, I do believe he has a good shot at having a stronger short round if Psycho Kid can't pull off this... Uh, resisting the bleed yeah no access to glusty either but if psycho kid can save the leader charges and glusty for a short round three that will still be very powerful but i think you're right that the strategy of miyamon is is what you mentioned just shortening that round as much as possible also Ceres just popped out of the deck uh which is nice for miyamon for a little bit of extra tempo here um Let's see, an Aramancy is still freed up. Restore, not currently, uh, you know, having any targets. Leader charges unused, but uh, there is a target in hand, of course, hmm. to, to spend these targets on. And it's this card coming down right now, the Veiled Carl, of course. Yeah, Veiled Carl. Finishing it up. Very nice. 
Very yeah. strong card. And you now have a pretty big chunker of a floof boy in the graveyard. And that is a problem if you're trying to play Witch's Sabbath yourself. You don't really want that card to come out as a 12 point finisher in round three. Yeah, that's a very good point. So nice for Yamon to get it out here in round two. Now it will also keep sucking up some of the damage here from the priest. Uh, that Ceres can then heal or even restore could go on. Not many turns, of course, for that to happen, but the leader charges can be spent for pretty good restore uh, onto this build Carl as well. Hmm. I, I wonder, is this going from a soft bleed into a full 2-0 push? If um, Miamon senses that maybe there is no Sabbath, uh... Maybe there is not that much of value in Psycho Kid's hand yet. Miamon may very well make that decision. Because the way Miamon has to set up, there are some pretty strong cards left. Mm, I'm wondering what the Neuromancy would do in this instance, however. There would be something like Harold Hounds now still uh, available in deck, but decides to take the pass here and not go all in and go for a really big restore. Just happy having that build Carlin graveyard for the incoming Sabbath in round three. Mm, I do respect the pass. I definitely respect it, especially with the finishers that my mon still has. He did what he wanted to do. He reduced the uh, length of the round that is coming, and now Psycho Kid doesn't have as many win conditions left. He's going to have to rely on getting some big cards on the board instead of swarming a bunch. And uh, he needs to be careful here because he can definitely get ahead, but we'll have to use a leader charge while he's doing it. Yep, yeah, that is right. Of course, the priest is also getting that extra point there. Um, but here comes the hive mind uh, target, which really nicely gets Psycho Kid ahead here, not having to spend any more than one leader charge. And we are off to round three hmm i would say with a fairly even situation honestly um i guess what miamon is hoping for is getting some sigvold action here with the sigvold maybe restoring uh, the canoes or even getting it from the witch's sabbath i believe mm. that will be coming down eventually the witch's sabbath is definitely not going to be as strong as you're hoping for when playing against a deck like Skellige. Skellige has some pretty big cards in that graveyard that's going to play for a lot of points as well. Uh, don't think you want that pallor in your hand right yeah. now. It's a, it's a bit of an awkward four point play at the moment. Definitely not the draw that Miamon was hoping for here. Um, could be better than Peller, that an Aeromancy would now be locked onto the Sig Vault. Uh, Herald Hounds, that would be a nice card to draw, something that Miamon has yet to see. Mardrums, even. I believe there should be one left still. Hmm. Alright. Psychic Kid is going first here. I don't believe he's playing Witch's Sabbath at all, is he? A very smart move. I don't think yeah, it was going gone. to benefit him at all. Glusty is where the main points will be at, uh, or even this Kikimura Stalker that will survive. Again, really no removal. Uh, the Decree, on the other hand, what do you think that will end up going on? Um, hmm. hmm. We don't have access to the deck right left. now, but yeah, yeah. again, like Glusty's going to be the biggest card ah. you have here. Obviously, the Van Warrior is going to be your choice. Yeah, one of those left still will be getting some cute value with the small tokens. Miamon, on the other hand, setting up this veteran, wanting to get that priest on board fairly soon. Full leader left as well, so it could be some nice restore value uh, eventually. And not finding the Sigdrifus right, uh, that means this discard from Psycho Kid is really, really strong. Miamon cannot get the Sigvold combo, a Sigvold Knut combo off at all uh, because of that uh, decision. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, it's not looking very good for Psycho Kid here. Um, he's Glasty, he's very weak. If he plays his cards correctly, he can get the maximum amount of drones available to him. Of course, those Andrega Warriors will get more charges, and that Brand Warrior is going to prove a pretty nice combo as well. 
Mayamon's combination just looks a little bit better as well as the leader charges he still has left. Restore too. Restore is going to play for a lot of value if you time it correctly. I'm wondering what the restore does end up going on. That pillar is just so unfortunate that I do think um, it could be looking better for Miamon as well here. So it's, I think we're going to come down to another pretty intense game uh, for sure. It's going to be interesting to see which way this round three ends up going. Yeah, these but yeah, not bronzes. As as <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the problem, unfortunately. Um, Glusty is likely going to play for little, little value. Because uh, you kind of want to use that Stalker in combination as well, where you get the chance to do so. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be very close, like you said. I, I still think that Skalaga has a Bill lot more up. options up its sleeve. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's a Melusine. Nice, some combo action, sandwich action going on here with that <laughs> warrior at the end. Uh, being able to press the Melusine once for rain is pretty cute. Mm -hmm. Certainly going to help. You're going to want to keep those drones off the board and only use it when necessary, or else Melusine's going to take care of it for you. Uh, yeah, I assume Melusine has a potential restore up her sleeve. I still think you're going to want to time the card to her left instead. I think it gets you more restore value. Hmm, actually. Heller not doing much here. <laughs> yeah, I take it back. You still have five leader charges, so spending that on Melusine is definitely going to yeah. help quite a bit. Yeah, that is going to be pretty nice. Um, all right, here is the max velocity value. Some amount of charges on this Kiki Stalker. Uh, setting up another velocity on this Peller. All right, pretty big point gap. That Brand Warrior went up to 14 points in a fairly short round three. Um, and here comes Miyamon's last play, which will be all of the leader charges spent. And uh, that veteran is also going to be reset back to eight and huge one point difference again. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what a close game. Mayamon does take it with his Skellige list. Well played, Mayamon. Did bleed Psycho Kid's AQ list very well. You almost got ahead there with that little Arachas Queen combo. Um, I mean, I say Arachas Queen, I mean AQ itself. It's, it's just pretty powerful. If he didn't maybe draw two Andrega Warriors and had some cards left, that would have been great. But Witch's Sabbath simply wasn't an option, as there were just far too many cards in the graveyard that would have benefited uh, Mayamon more than Psycho Kid. So, well played, very close. Yeah, that was very intense and pretty scary for Miamon as well. That Peller being set up into a glossy target, which was actually a little bit scary. Uh, I think, I mean, that would have happened regardless. I think there were some unused charges as well on the Stalker at the end from the glossy. So, yeah, not having last say was maybe not uh, great there for Psycho Kid. But uh, interesting to see that... Melusine actually got through here, and um, yeah, I see now why the AQ wasn't banned. <laughs> this was the matchup I think Miyama was looking for, uh, because the Skellige list in particular is a very solitaire list, similar, you know, combo deck versus combo deck, um, as was said earlier, so I think mm. that was something that Miyama took advantage of, that um, the list wasn't as control heavy as uh, Psycho Kid's other lists, so... Absolutely, and I mean, we are already here uh, on two wins for Mayamon. That means we we basically have uh, one left, which is his Nilfgaard list. If he can take this through, he wins. Yeah, red coin, of course, being the preferable coin here for this list that is very, very slow in terms of setup. At first, um, having to take it now on blue is going to be interesting to see. Uh, how that will work out because Psycho Kid does have a lot of power, uh, having drawn both the Feign Death and the Vanadane already in the starting hand here. Going to be quite um, difficult, I think, for Mumon 
to not lose on either even or having to commit more than he would hope for here in round one but we'll see Mm, it's an excellent list Psycho Kid is playing here to uh, try and win on even, especially having drawn Vanadane and Feindeth, like you said, a very nice combo. Um, yeah, they're, they're certainly going to try and win on even, that's for sure. Maimon starting off with a 4P card, one of the few cards he has that's quite proactive. And there we yeah. see Feindeth being dropped. It's going to be interesting because the hand of Miamon is looking fairly committal and not so many of those carryover cards that I think this list is ideally looking to set up. Um, but yeah, a lot of power waiting in Psycho Kid's uh, hand. Miamon, on the other hand, just uh, playing it slow for now, uh, boosting this Infiltrator up a bit. Mm, yeah, boosting the Infiltrator, not a lot here you can do about it. Backup plan being played as well. That's going to play another Elf, triggering your Fane death while you're at it. Again, already pushing the tempo here. Mayamon has to be careful. Uh, you don't want to commit your cards unless you're going all out. There's a lot of aristocrats in hand. Wow. And yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're going committal. Um, Psycho Kid didn't drop the Vanadane right away, instead opted for the Bronze Elf from backup plan. And now Miamon sort of sees the danger and says, all right, you know what, I still have time to play the Masquerade Bulb now. Because of course, if you lose on even, it will be bled out later. So perhaps it's better to say, fine, I'll take my value where I can get it. And it is now when there is an actual tall target to poison uh, being the Elf there that comes out of uh, 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 Feindeth. death <laughs> yeah we see vanadane coming down very nicely triggering Feindeth. death Wele is going to play for quite a bit of points with that combo and uh yeah psycho kid easily ahead still we are gonna see these aristocrats coming down now i do miss the days of masquerade ball being meta it was one of those <laughs> One of those nice days when Toxic meant something entirely different. <laughs> you know what, Tia? Now is your chance. If Miamon can pull this off, I think you have no excuses to not play this list on the ladder. <laughs> this is very true. You make a very compelling point. <laughs> and just like that, Miamon is ahead again. Psycho Kid's still having the options to play all those waylays. Uh, it will be triggering quite a bit of Swarm. And, I mean, Swarm is a wonderful list to play against something that is control-heavy, like Poison, as Poison is going to struggle to find a big target. And, uh, yeah, Psycho Kid's gonna want to abuse that as much as he possibly can in this matchup. Yeah. This is an interesting strategy to see from Miamon, and perhaps it is the only valid one, uh, because... Psycho Kid will run into some issues here, spending Vanadine, spending Fain Death, not being able to win on even is not the ideal situation that you're looking for. Uh, of course, the Waylays are still quite a few points, but not really after that. There is Peller, there is a Squirrel, all, all very slow cards. And I think that means sort of Miamon is securing round one here and can afford to play one of those carryover cards that was now drawn into the hand and playing very slow, not committing anything more. Uh, Psycho Kid seeing this and saying, all right, I am out of here. No point in playing these waylays. Perhaps they are just uh, mulligan targets for the sim last later. Uh, as now the game is in Miamon's hand. Uh, wondering if we're going to see a long round three or if... Uh, we're going to be seeing a push for those waylays and a push for the simulas, perhaps. Yeah, there are definitely a lot of strategies you can go for here. Of course, when you're swarming, you're not too worried about all the poisons. I'd say Gord is the obvious target of poison here. And Mayamon is already pushing here. He does have the option of still passing. The thing with Swarm is you can also abuse Swarm and kind of hope that they overswarm and waste some of that board space. The Broccolon Sentinel is an obvious brick in hand right now. Um, yeah, it will remain a brick if Psycho Kid doesn't thin out with his leader ability, but that is just overcommitment at this point. 
if Myanmar decides to pass here and take the long round and enjoy the last say, like you said, Gord is a nice poison target for those uh, rock tossers, perhaps. Um, it would be fun to see this infiltrator now in Psycho Kid's hand come back to bite Myamon later, but uh, not quite done yet, says Myamon. Uh, plays a dame and you're together with the Ardfane, of course. Lots of um, statuses being applied. The dame is instantly growing, looking like a nice muscle target. If uh, Psycho Kid decides to do that, just a debomb for now, using two leader charges. Uh, way cheaper to get rid of it that way. Absolutely. Yeah, I can think of other targets that might be necessary as well. Like uh, Philip or the Rot Husser. Those are definitely not cards you can ever allow to survive. Um, oh, what a beautiful card. I miss playing the Usurper. It is a very nice card with one of the my favorite premiums, I think, or card art in general, along with the Cynthia, to be fair. Uh, it's fun to see that card again. Uh, this little clog package that Psycho Kid, uh, sorry, that Miamon is setting up for Psycho Kid to have to run into, spawning the golem on top of Psycho Kid's deck. Mm, and we're seeing Alyssa here, likely going to be shuffling back that Wele into the deck, setting up Simlas for later. Simlas already packing quite a punch. I can see Mayamon potentially trying to get that out, as it is one of the only win cons here, is really building up Simlas as well as Gord, but Gord doesn't come near Simlas in value. Some nice Joachim pulls here, uh, the second Infiltrator. Two clogs potentially now going into Psycho Kid's deck in before round three which maybe isn't mm, yeah no it's not that great <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say hmm, but then you don't draw away ways so maybe that's good but i don't know if a four point uh card is is better much better than that <laughs> interesting my mom's ahead by uh 17 points here and uh i think we're going to breach that gap here finally simless being committed converse with an eight all right, and Psycho Kid, of course, getting ahead with this play as well, uh, timing it that way, saying, okay, fine, I'll give you the waylay, but you're not going to have last say to be able to, to poison my, my board. And um, Miamon is potentially okay with that, and getting the Simlas out is, of course, pretty big. Yeah, Miamon very happy getting Simlas out. That is probably all he wanted here, and finally... He only has to worry about Gord being one of the major win cons in this deck that is left. Uh, whew, Heatwave isn't going to find that Masquerade target either as it was uh, committed quite early. And we are seeing that nasty golem brick in hand. Not something you want to see here if you're Psycho Kid. Infiltrator and golem. A clog package paid off here for me and one for sure. <laughs> yeah, certainly not something you want to see, but it's not over yet. We do see some control cards left like Heatwave and Muzzle uh, that can promptly deal with other cards here like that of Philip or uh, yeah, even Rot Hoster, for example. Uh, it's not yeah. over yet. Yeah, you mentioned earlier the Muzzle on the Philippe and that being kind of like the dream target and... Uh... You can do that, but there's still Miamon's leader that is unused, which could then get a Philippe back if uh, Miamon chooses to use the leader target on the muscled Philippe. So we'll see um, what's going to be happening with that. Hmm, very true. And he does go with the proactive play, and we finally see the card evolved to its final form. That's going to be beautiful. A big play there, and uh, I do believe it still gets triggered with Assimilate as well. Yep. Siri as well, waiting. Uh, Gord currently boosting himself by an 8, was shown to us just now. 6 point Maxi, 3 point Golem, 4 point Infiltrator. Not the nicest cards. The good thing about this Usurper, though, is that it allows Psycho Kid to thin out the leader nice, nicely uh, with the leader ping and then having a target. Uh, unless Miamon 
starts boosting them very soon with the boo hoots. Mm. Psycho Kid giving him as little value as he possibly can, decides to play the Infiltrator instead. Now, Mayamon here has quite a few options. Like you said, the Buhurt, he also has Coup de Grasse, which is a nice target to play. Perhaps on Roderick. Yeah, I think Psycho Kid should take the leader here just in case that token gets boosted by the Buhurt from Siri. Uh, but we'll see. Hmm. Both players taking it slow here. I think Psycho Kid is going to try and commit as little as possible for as long as possible. He doesn't have that many targets on the board yet he wants to play into. Plays another Guardian. Places it on the range row as well next to an artifact. That is a very good play because of Rot Tosser. Rot Tosser not being able to take out as many cards as it potentially could have. All right, and Siri does indeed come down now and plays the other Boohurt. She will turn sides when she reaches eight. Okay. Starting to look a bit sketchy here for Psycho Kid. These cards are growing very big and there's really not that much left on Psycho Kid's end. You have Heat Wave, you have Gord. And you have that leader ability still up your sleeve, though it's going to struggle to find the right amount to kill to pull off the Broccolon Sentinels. Yeah, we saw that Maxi also showed us the peak of Psycho Kid's deck. There is a Curse of Corruption in there, which could have been really nice, uh, as Miamon is indeed going pretty tall here with all of the boosts. Um, now the question is, will you take the muscle just to turn off the Philippe? Will you perhaps... Um, Heat wave it instead to deny Miamon getting the Philippe back. That doesn't seem great either, considering that there are some tall units on Miamon's side of the board. I'm also now wondering what this leader target will go on. Perhaps Muscle would be looking at something uh, like the Rot Tosser instead. Mm, but yeah, this is definitely a bit of a choice for Psycho Kid to decide when to take the the muscle went to allow Miamon to get it back. Miamon holding on to that leader for now. Vitality coming down here on the maxi, making it another pretty desirable uh, target. Heat waving the usurper instead. Allowing this Philippe to go through, but All perhaps right. planning to delete it before it has any chance of poisoning. Hmm. I do see the play, the play still being trying to deny units that are valuable on your own side of the board. Um, yeah, I do get it. So I think Usurper was always going to be a heatwave target. And we see that lock coming down now again, not doing anything. We also see the Rot Tosser. Is that potentially getting stolen instead? I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised to see that elf coming down and sit on psycho kids and to deny fergus as well as coup de grasse taking advantage of just playing more north guard cards yeah whatever psycho kid does decide to muscle here is something that miamon can get right back and perhaps that is also the reason for the timing behind this rot tosser uh, that the order can still be um received after you copy it from your opponent's side of the board. Um, so yeah, perhaps it is the Dragoon coming down. Uh, Gord is the target of choice. Not saving that for last. Uh, probably because the muscle currently is not so useful. Hmm, okay, so we see an early commitment Gord here. Even though Psycho Kid had the option of playing it last say, Deciding to play it now instead here. So we're going to see Mayama now pull off these combinations. He has three Rotosser charges. He's going to play Fergus, which is going to be placed on three different cards. And now the fun begins. Let's see if we can eliminate some of these cards. It's going to be a poison coming down now on the maxi because of that vitality. And Psycho Kid's leader charge will have to go now on these little... 
tokens to to rescue one card from getting poisoned. I believe this will be the turn that Psycho Kid is going to take that muscle. Um, yeah, this isn't see. looking very good for Psycho Kid. This is a very awkward position to be in. If he can't do anything about those Rotos's Maxi is just going to uh, disappear. And that, in itself, I believe, will win Mayam on this game. Right. The Dragoon can move a unit to another side to put a poison on potentially the Siri. But it looks like it's the muscle. I'm wondering if the Rockinol and Sentinel can actually hit uh, your old units. Um, I have to admit. they. I mean, they can be placed to protect the poisons. You ping down one, place the one next to the Rot Tosser to protect Maxi here. Yep. The Philippe Steel comes in handy now. Okay. Very nicely done. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, managed to survive yet another turn and expertly played. Of course, the uh, kill was denied, so the Brocklon Sentinel didn't pull out the others. We see that leader coming down there with a 10 point Philip. We're also going to see Coup de Grasse playing for even more points. And I do believe that is just going to be enough for Mayamon to pull this off. Yeah, having getting that coup on the Philippe is very nice. And of course, getting Zeal uh, because of the Philippe that was taken back with the leader, then allowing the poison to actually go through with the seal. But Psycho Kid did try his best to deny that. That was a really interesting last series of plays that we got to see. Well, uh, I believe that's our third 3-0 in a row. <laughs> that's yeah, uh, pretty actually. interesting. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> this is our third 3-0 series. And I'm not going to lie, when I first saw the matchup today, I was convinced that Miyamon was going to have a hard time because, you know, usually control is good into any kind of greed lineups, but what worked in Miyamon's favor was being able to get that Northern Realms through. And to be mm. fair, uh, Northern Realms doesn't really depend on your engines being uh, controlled. Like, it doesn't need them to stick on the board very much, which is why I think it was fine, perhaps. A psycho kid could have considered uh, banning the NR list that potentially had the easiest time uh, to get the things through, but said then that Nature's Gift just had too many threats to control, I suppose. Uh, but it was going to be an uphill battle for Miamon, and uh, especially surprising being able to get that imposter through on a blue coin was mm. very interesting to see. Um, and Squirtle not being able to win there for Psycho Kid. Control lineup losing to a more greedy lineup. It's very, uh, you know, not conventional to see, but really well played to me, I'm on. Yeah, that was absolutely crazy. I do think we can take a look at the bracket now. So our current format, guys, is looking like this again we are playing a totally new format this year we have a mid-season masters and we have a masters at the end of the year right now this mid-season is going to be split over two weekends this weekend being the first there are four groups bear with me this is group a and right now it was up to mayamon and psycho kid to see who's the next person to advance to next weekend because Mayamon won, he is going to be uh, taking place in the next weekend Masters that we will be casting. The eliminated player is unfortunately out. And uh, yeah, Psycho Kid is going to have to try again later this year. Yeah, this is very intense, intense series. I'm still kind of... Um really impressed by how it turned out and how Miyamon was able to pull this one out uh yeah Oof. really intense series but it was very fun to cast 